Alright my friends, welcome back, of course. Now normally I don't do that, I don't start off with a time lapse and then go into an actual game, into the actual gameplay, but I thought, you know what, I'm struggling here, I'm just going to record everything I'm going to do, and then basically process the video overnight, but here we are. So, a couple comments, first of all, uh, when the Communal friends were still alive, someone asked, if I just took Marseille, would that have capitulated the Communal friends? <clears throat> and the answer to that question is no, because if you, it was really quick in the time lapse. But one of the Entente members actually did invade and successfully took Marseille, the capital. They still didn't capitulate, because Lyon was the capital, not Marseille, eventually. So, even if we did capture it, it really didn't matter. Um, yeah, and this is this is the borders after the peace deal, which ended, which was at the end of the time lapse. So, well, some of the borders. I think we're still fighting the Socialist Republic of Italy. Union of Iceland, Union of Britain, which is really weird. I don't know why, but the Union of Britain just kind of gave up on everyone else. I gave Alsace Lorraine back to the French Empire, actually, which is really weird, seeing as that's a core of the French Empire. Yeah, most of France is not cored. Whatever. And I gave Germany back the territories. Frankfurt is now the capital, led by good old Kaiser Wilhelm III. And basically, here's the plan. I made the United States release Austria. So, there are American puppets. I gave Czechoslovakia to uh, America. I gave Hungary to America. I gave Slovenia to America. Just because I figured, you know what? We're the Canada, and we want to go home, to the, uh, go home basically. We're not going to have that much power or strength to really administer too much. But I did take the Benelux. And actually, I gave, in exchange for alsace Lorraine, which wasn't a good deal for Germany. But Germany did come back. I did give them Luxembourg. So, I do have Belgium or as a puppet of me as well as the Netherlands, so I figured, you know what, I might as well take a little something here too, so, there are puppets, uh, so yeah, it actually worked out pretty well, it was quite the grind, but you know what helps out when you have enough manpower by service by requirement, so, also, if you really wanted to know what the focuses I took, I'll, I'll, I can let you read them, because I did almost all of the, uh, air doctrine ones, there's the jet propulsion initiative, uh, the chalk river labs, if you want to read that, go right ahead, fighter program, go right ahead here, uh, now I can't do focus on the RCAF, because you can either focus on that one, or you can focus on the RCN. So either one, you can only choose either one of these two, so it is what it is. Um, I didn't realize that until I actually couldn't select it, but that's okay. You know, things happen. Imperial Air Training Plan, which wasn't too bad. I'm kind of surprised we were actually, we were actually able to do you know, pretty well. It just took America, and actually India did really, really well. We paid Canadian blood for the unification of India, so that India would pay their Indian blood, so that we could uh, to basically take over Europe with them, or retake over Europe. So that was actually really good for for us that that happened. God bless the Indian nation, Whew. because that was crazy. I didn't do anything in Italy. It was all the Americans, Portuguese, Indian nation. It was great, really great. And I think we should be almost done here. Uh, cool. And I don't remember we had this, but I wanted to start back up and not take over the Union of Britain without you guys, just because <clears throat> we have the decision to contact the British Loyalists. Once again, we've gained a foothold on the British mainland. The Loyalists we have been in contact with will be prepared to rise up and fight on our behalf. Beautiful. Our attempts to contact the Loyalists remaining in the Union have been successful. As we thought, they, we've been, they've been collecting numbers and equipment since the fall of the Empire, and while they haven't had the strength to take on the Syndicalists by themselves, they're more than ready to rise up now that we have our foothold in Gloucestershire. Gloucestershire. They've gathered in the hills of central England and are preparing to attack at our command. Cool. I'm not going to attack them yet because we're not quite there yet. Who's the ship? They said central England. Is that around here? Oh, okay. Bravo, gents. Go ahead. Beautiful. Beautiful. New men. Good luck. Actually, how? Oh, they actually some of them are mountaineers. 18. That's not, that's not bad, especially for almost basically being militia divisions. That's not great, but you know what? I'll gladly take them. Let them be led by a... General Bug, Hoffmeister. And right now, we have set up another naval invasion to invade. But the infantry has been doing really, really well. So Good, good, good. Also, someone recommended I use decryption in our uh, army against these guys, which I totally forgot to do in some cases until the very, very end of the episode, uh, when we had the final push against everyone. This turned out to be like our timeline, like France with the United States and Canada and the UK invaded, like... France in our timeline and Belgium. It's just slow going, grinding through enemy divisions and stuff like that, which was which kinda worked out, but let's go and make sure we actually use this. 
And blueprint ceiling, what are we building? More military factories, some infrastructure, stuff like that. Yeah, I think, oh, Belgium agrees to join. Oh, I did ask Belgium to join the Entente or IEDC. Nice. Very nice. More convoys sunk. Let's go ahead and get the Netherlands in. Beautiful. Look at all everyone that's an Entente. Hopefully they stay in the Entente though. That's that's my main concern. <laughs> uh, we'll see what happens. Improved infantry crew in three. It is 1944 though, my friends. Now, but we will end this war very very soon. And actually, you know what? I actually did this stuff. I said at the beginning, or I guess in the second episode, that I'd focus more on special forces like mountaineers and marines. So I actually researched all this stuff, which is really good. You get more acclimatization for hot and cold weather, advanced special forces training, pretty good stuff. I didn't use paratroopers, obviously, but that's okay. Uh, I actually went with signal companies as well, which I normally don't choose. So, did make it a little different, and I did pull out most of the mountaineers and marines and made them into their own special group, right here. Which was actually not too bad, because they were my main group that I was throwing around soldiers with. Uh, for now... Probably just more armored cruisers, because we, we've actually lost a lot of... We've lost a lot of ships, and for a while, actually, I took over the Sardinian Navy, which was pretty cool. Oh, you guys already won there. Oh, well, just come to the mainland, then. The Fall of London, this is the beginning of the end, my friends. The beginning of the end. <sighs> Love it. Actually, Denmark... Uh, you know what? Portugal invaded Denmark. I'm not sure if I really want to give it back to Denmark. Oh, they invaded Iceland. I'm not really sure if I want to give it back to Denmark, though. Yeah, I'm not so sure about that, not gonna lie. Hmm. Oh boy. Well, that's not looking ideal. Ooh. Nice. 12 destroyers. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Join here with my cat, Binky, who looks. Binky! A little tired, but that's okay. Great. Now the convoy's been sunk. Yeah, at this point, here are the casualties again. We've lost a lot. Oh, the Entente has. America, you know, when the AI just naval invades like crazy, they go bonkers. Over 800,000. Over a third, almost a third of a million, almost a million for the German Empire itself, which actually makes sense for Germany since they lost the country. And we've done it, my friends. Not bad. So, <clears throat> just be, uh, I think I'm just going to go ahead and say we're going to take all of them states over there. And then Union of Iceland, uh, let's see, Social Republic of Italy, we're Sardinia. We'll give it all to Sardinia. Nice. And Iceland, you know what? <clears throat> I'm going to give it to the Pacific States of America, or the USA, just because we need someone strong to hold on to it for now. And that is the end of the Second Weltkrieg, my friends. Now, that's it. they said there was a Cold War between the Third International and the Moscow Accords, but I don't see it. I really don't see it. Oh, hands on deck. Oh, we, ooh, we're going to lose population. Invasion focus. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, IDEC investment. Do it in... Uh, do it in Puerto Rico. We haven't done that one yet. Royal visits. Return to the king. <clears throat> London is now back in our hands in the capital and in the very heart of the British Empire. At long last, we can restore the UK and the monarchy. Ease up conscription and demobilize. No, 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 no. So what happens here? The liberation of the UK. Greater London is not owned. Great. Oh, 15 days. That's not bad. Ah, royal celebration. King Albert and the entire royal family attended a massive celebration in the Canadian capital today. As an event... <clears throat> Intended to highlight all the good that the royals do for the country. Large crowds line the streets to get a look at the passing motorcade, and the king stopped the parade numerous times so he can, so he and his daughters get into the vehicles and greet people in person. The speech given by the king at the end of the parade is still the talk of the city, and Canadian newspapers are not, are not sparse in the praise. Along with the king, cool. He's very, very popular compared to the British exiles. I, I thought that an event would say something about us, like, taking over the Union again. But I guess not. Okay, whatever. I do have a cup of coffee to keep us nice and warm, though. So at this point, I could end the campaign here, but maybe... Oh, we won't. What is going on? Uh-oh, Japan's finally getting uppity. Are you, uh, they want to go to war with Kenya. I don't really care, to be honest with you. Let them do that. All right, my friends. Return of the king. Oh, the UK exists. Well, we got to wait a little bit, I guess. Wait. Uh, do we get a new tree, or is this the tree that only that we get? The Canadian referendum. Uh... Loyal to the Empire. Loyalty to the Empire. British investments. A Canadian constitution. Forging a new path. The new nationalism. Filling the void. Oh, wow. New Canadian officers. Um. Hmm. 
We don't need to do the land doctrine. Naval bombing program. We could do that one. The FFA was founded soon after the Great War as aviation arm of the Royal Navy, and its officers advocated for a new theory of naval warfare built around the aircraft carrier as a primary weapon of the fleet. Naval bombers can threaten any fleet, and planes are starting to become a fearsome weapon of war. Very cool. All right, let's take a look at this stuff. So ooh, we made another cruiser. Nice, because we could actually use those. Go home and repair. Y'all do the same thing. Great. Uh, I'm not really sure what we're going to do with these extra dockyards. Uh, we're going to lose them eventually because we can't unite the UK and Canada under one banner. Which actually would be very, very cool if we could do that, but I don't think that's going to happen. Ah, the liberation of the UK, my friends. It is finally here. After years of exile and struggle, the royal family has returned to the United Kingdom in triumph. It is a glorious day for Britain and the Empire, all of whom are thankful to the Dominion of Canada for its valiant service to the cause of tradition and world order. God save the King. Restore the United Kingdom. They join the Entente. Um, oh. Oh, yeah. Also, Belgium and Netherlands. So, your, your current puppets become puppets of the UK. That's kind of cool. I will play as the UK just because Canada's cool and all. But, uh, huh. Restoration of the United Kingdom. And Ulster has rebelled. Uh... Should I send volunteers? Um, okay. Oh, wait. Oh, we only have four research slots? Oh, that is so sad. That is so sad. Let's get some more extraction then. Get some more fuel because we're not going to have any fuel. I was doing fuel refining too. That sucks. Mm, 45. I guess I could could have continued as Canada, but I guess it's UK time now. Get some better fighters. Uh, we're not training anybody. Oh, no. Oh, we lost the army. Oh, you know what? This is definitely an experience, to say the least. We have nothing. Oh, why? Oh, man. Oh, and that, that's, that's all. Oh, my goodness. That's all of our manpower. Oh, 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 oh man. Oh, this is the Sardinia division. Well, if I can only make one division, I guess it would be a guy here. I'd like to make multiples and more Marines, because I like the Marines. And I want to make Mountaineers, too, but I guess not. Um. Oh, man, that is... What happened here? Holy cow. Oh my goodness. Hey, we've got to focus though. Great. So I guess we'll continue playing for now, and we'll see what happens. The Reconstruction Authority. The county's been turned inside out. Many are homeless. The entire country's been de devastated by the war. And now we're in need of quick decisions to rebuild it all. The British Reconstruction Authority will be empowered to, to do just that. You know what? If I ever play as Canada again, and I do the same thing again, I'll probably just stay as Canada. Even though there's really not much more after that. I mean, you get bonuses to, like, ships. Maybe. That's it. Really not much. At this point, we don't even have light tanks. Even though, actually, I'm still going to make one light tank thing. Just because we have some divisions that actually use light tanks as recon. So, we'll do that. Uh, carrier naval bomber ones. Uh, naval bombers are pretty good. Get some... Tactical bombers. Some Blenheims. Let's see. We have a lot of dockyards. That's actually really good. Oh, does anything... Oh, does... don't tell me nothing carries over. I might actually... Oh, oh, we have no naval XP. Oh, why do you hurt me? Oh, why does it hurt me? And, um, These are all capital ships. Carrier hull, carrier hull, carrier hull, carrier hull. Veltkrieger, pre-dreadnoughts, nah. Also defense ship. What is that? Not worth it. it this is something we want to keep. Uh, You know what? Everything else we can just kind of throw away. Uh, we might keep you because we can. There you go, that's not bad. Make some of this for now. Do we have a navy at all? Do we get even one ship? Okay, never mind. We gotta make something here then. 5,000 would be too much. But honestly, if we're gonna spend some. Oh, no, 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 no. You have a level 3. Wait, so you have a level 2 and a hangar. You have a hangar and. Okay then. Here we go. Pain me so, Navy or Hoi for Why? All I can afford are carriers, and they're not great. Uh, you know what? Um, Yorkshire. 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 Make as many carriers as you possibly can, I guess. I, I'm not really sure what to say about that, but... Cool! Oh, we have some more. Oh, yeah, there you go. 
And our supply sale of the new British Army. Okay. Okay, we have some divisions. With the restoration of the UK, a large number of British exiles who've been drafted into the Canadian Army are now the first to return home. They've been assembled into a large number of home guard units desperately needed to maintain order. Soon to follow them are the senior generals and admirals who've been serving in Canada up until now, all of whom are incre incredibly pleased to have to see the whole miles once again. Oh, goodness. Oh, my goodness. Thank goodness. Oh, good lord. Ah. Uh. And reconstruction, reconstruction Authority announced. While the monarchy has been restored to the British Isles, many policymakers feel that the country needs to undergo a difficult desyndicalization process. Syndicalist rule permeated deep into British culture and society, as well as the economy, so that we must be rebuilt along with many homes that were laid waste during the war. On the steps of the damaged Westminster Parliament, Prime Minister Henry Page Croft, and also a hopefully but not enthusiastic crowd that the BRA, or British Reconstruction Authority, has been created and granted broad governing powers to see the rejuvenation process done as swiftly as possible. And the restoration. At long last, King Albert I entered Westminster Abbey today to be properly crowned as, as virtually all English and their British monarchs have been throughout history. Today is a glorious day, one that will mark a new beginning for the UK. After the coronation is over, however, the king and his government will find the task of rebuilding the country is just the beginning. The country's army is in a difficult position. With an organization that will need to be started over from scratch, the economy has been completely upended, just as it was after the uprising, and the fate of the British Britain's former syndicalist rulers must be decided upon. Oh boy. That looks like a lot of pain. That's okay. We'll get through it. Oh, we actually have tanks, huh? Okay, so they're using a not terrible. Temp oh no 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 no! And you guys are nope. I don't care. I'm just I'm, I'm I have to do that. Oh yes. Oh, we got our generals back. Uh, Spanish aid arrives. A great deal of solely needed assistance from our Spanish allies arrived today. They've been very generous. Okay, Muscat. Muscati aid arrives? Cool. American aid? God, I love America and Spain and Muscat. Great. So, I don't think we're the leaders, right? We are not the leaders of this group. Demand... Hmm. Higher foreign and naval advice. Ooh. Okay, so we get 50 naval... Ooh. I'll do that. You know what? We are a young nation. But I don't want to demob... Oh, actually, we're not even demobilized. So, we'll see what happens. Over here? Nice. Not bad, not bad. Guard infantry, love it, but we'll do okay. We don't need that. Mountains, I want to make some of those eventually. Wow, this is uh, looking a little crazy, but I want to get through at least one more focus before we go anywhere else. Or we conclude the episode. Um, Oh, that's not bad. Military and civilian factory construction speed. I'd love that, but let's go with early mobilization immediately. Because we got to build, build, build. Oh my goodness. London has... Or, actually, Scotland's not looking bad. They're actually looking pretty good. The Scots made out pretty well. Australasian... Portuguese. Oh, I love the Entente. We're like a big old family here, man. This is great. This is great. And let's see. Do we need that bonus for naval doctrines? No, we don't. We got a few more things we can do here, but <sighs> partial mobilization, yes. And actually, I'm going to go do this one, too. That's just Marconi Wireless. That's too important to do. To not do. Uh, invitation to the IEDC. So a delegation for the Canadian government arrived today to formally invite the UK into the IEDC, the Imperial Economic Development Council. The IEDC was created to foster general economic cooperation with the Entente with yearly and voluntary contributions of political power, which are invested back into member nations at the discretion of the Dominion of Canada. Well, there are those in the government who express concern whether the UK would actually see a return for this investment, seeing as the Dominion of Canada could simply decide to invest everything in itself, but considering donations are voluntary, it seems like this would ensure a short life for the IEDC. Oh, uh, yeah. We have no interest in joining. That'd be funny if we did not do that. But we're going to do that Entente air, uh, air Training Scheme. We've been invited by the Canadian government to join in a large-scale multinational air training program on the Canadian soil. It will strengthen our alliance and improve the skill of our pilots, but it may be seen as a concession to Canadian dominance of the Entente. We already are in a bad rut, so we're going to do whatever we want. So, let's do Liberation Day or Liberty Day. Across the UK, stores and factories are closed as the British gathered in a national day of remembrance in honor of those who lost their lives in the struggle against syndicalism. The central activities of the day... <clears throat> Occur in London, where on the anniversary of his death, the remains of George V have been interned in a special vault, an elaborate ceremony at Westminster Abbey, attended by King Albert and the royal family, leading and political military figures. This solemn act has finally fulfilled the light king's dying wish to return home. After the ceremony, King Albert led a procession to the east end of the mall, where a monument to George V was unveiled. The king stated that the monument comm commemorated all those who had been victims of the former regime, and that never again would syndicalism threaten British liberty. To honor the victims of syndicalism, and keep fresh the memory of what has been done, been so nearly lost and so dearly regained henceforth this day every year is to be celebrated as liberty day for king and country and they've agreed also the government has just acceded to our demands ulcers ours again okay great and investors which we get every year i'm gonna go ahead and do Ooh, construction might be really good to do help oh never mind never mind never mind get them assist with our economy oh my goodness Woo. 
and exiles encounter resistance. Those British citizens who fled the UK after a fell to syndicalist rule or the exiles have encountered increasing resistance now as they begin to return to the country in large numbers. Disputes over ownership of homes and estates which have been abandoned are frequent, and resentment towards the wealthier exiles who returned, untouched by war and poverty, has become the norm. King Albert launched a radio appeal to the British people, reminding them that the exiles are the very reason their freedom has been regained. They're not returning as conquerors, but as lost lambs brought back into the flock. Even so, many believe it will take many years to heal the social divide between these two groups. Very worrying, which actually makes sense. The Canadian government in general. Now that King Albert has returned to the UK, he can no longer act sit personally in the Canadian House of Commons. The time has come to appoint a Governor General to stand on his, in his stead. The question is who is to send? Regarding rewarding one of our generals with a prestigious post will certainly look good to our military, but the Canadian, Canadians might appreciate rewarding one of their own instead. Um, that, ooh. Uh, you know what? The Canadians have done very well, and I don't, I'm not exactly sure how to keep them in line here. I want to keep them in the Entente as a buddy, because we like them, because we you know they're pretty good. But I'm going to go with let the Canadians choose their own representatives. Let them have their own deal. So, treaty mission with Australia's and Confederation. The government of the nation has approached us regarding the possibility of a new bilateral agreement between our countries. In return for dropping the tariffs in place currently restricting imports, they promise to do the same for British goods. No? Of course we will. So, we're going to end today's episode there just because I think it's gone on long enough. I hope you enjoyed it though, because we are back home, my friends. If you enjoyed it, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we shall continue and potentially end up in a conflict between us and the Empire of Japan. And let's take a look at the nations. Aus Austria, Hungary, and Czechia. Cool. Regardless, thank you very much for watching. If you liked it, consider leaving a like. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we have a great time together once again. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.